Pole dancing is hard as hell, but is it the most difficult aerial sport? For some background, I've tried everything except for straps and the more obscure aerial apparatuses like chain, net, or hook, both in the hair and in the skin. <laughs> and although I'm no expert in any of the aerial arts, including pole, I am still a beginner, <laughs> I have enough experience from different classes, workshops, studios, instructors, or friends who have experience that I believe I can speak to this subject with some semblance of expertise. And if you think I'm wrong and an idiot, please feel free to leave a comment telling me so right after you've liked and subscribed. Okay. Some people divide aerial apparatuses into two categories, vertical and horizontal. In this case, pole, rope, and silks would be vertical apparatuses since they go straight up and down, and things like lira and trapeze would be horizontal apparatuses since they go across, their bars ending up more or less parallel to the floor. And hammock is sort of an in-between since it is like a soft trapeze made of silk. You can also divide aerial apparatuses into these two categories, soft slash malleable and firm slash inflexible. In this case, silks, rope, and hammock are once again together because they are soft and movable, but this time pole joins trapeze and lira because although you can manipulate the straps of those apparatuses, the basic shape of the apparatus is not going to change no matter what you do to it, unless you break it. <laughs> For example, no matter how much you move a lira around, it's still going to be a hoop shape at the end of the day. With malleable apparatuses, you move them around your body, and with inflexible apparatuses, you are more often moving your body around the apparatus, although there are quite a few moves on the lira and trapeze that involve moving the apparatus itself. Not so with pole. Nothing you do is going to move this baby. It is a stick straight up and down, and that is how it's going to stay, unless you're me and you accidentally yank it out of the ceiling. <laughs> no matter how you try and manipulate a pole, there it is. So you are responsible for moving your body around the apparatus for every trick without fail, no exceptions. That's part of what makes poles so difficult. It's utter inflexibility. When I used to do silks, for example, there's a particularly difficult trick called the crossback straddle. You have to bring the silks up your back in an X shape before flipping upside down, and you really need to get the X in the right spot or else you won't be able to engage your abs and hip flexors to move you backwards. However, if the X wasn't in the right spot, I could push down on the silk, wiggle it along my back, or tug it to get more or less slack. Pole offers you exactly none of those options. <laughs> if you're not in the exact right spot for your skin to catch or the pressure to push you against the pole, you are not getting the move, or at the very least, you're going to slide right out. You can't adjust the apparatus or finagle it around in any different way. You've either got it perfectly right, or you don't. This also leads to feeling limited by pole when you first start. After your first few fun spins and tricks, you're sort of like, um, okay, now what? How many more ways can there possibly be to move my body around this pole? Whereas with something like silks, by virtue of it being malleable, there are infinite ways to move it around, tie yourself up, flutter it, etc. The next thing that makes pole so difficult is there is nowhere to take a break on the apparatus. If you get tired in the middle of a trapeze or lira routine, for example, there is a ready-made seat there for your sweet little patoot. Mind you, if your ass is as big as mine, it's never going to be comfortable, per se, to rest on an inch-wide bar of metal, but still you've got a safe place to rest, like a little canary on a perch. Vertical apparatuses are slightly trickier, but you can always put your foot into what's called a footlock, which takes the pressure off of your upper body. Or you can wrap the fabric around yourself to catch some of your weight. You can pretty much tie yourself up in whatever knot you need in order to take a break while you're in the air. With the pole, if you want to take a break, you gotta find some way to cling on with your skin. Tired legs? Ah, oh, well, you're shoving the pole against your elbow. Tired arms? Ah, oh, you're shoving that pole against your thighs. <laughs> no matter what, if you want to stay up in the air on a pole, your poor skin is being tugged and pulled and bruised to keep you up there. This brings us to the discussion about pain. Pole is painful. That's like kind of its whole thing. <laughs> to get through an entire pole routine is an endurance test. Now, here's a, a grain of salt. I was doing the most beginner baby moves on trapeze and lira, so I never experienced the pain of a drop or a really pinchy move like a single arm elbow hang or something. I am sure those hurt like hell. And rope has a fun way of scraping your skin off while you're trying to climb it or even do a simple footlock. And silks have a tendency to burn any exposed flesh. So this is not me saying that pole is the only aerial apparatus capable of inflicting pain. I'm saying it's the only one that is synonymous with it. Most apparatuses, as I mentioned, will pinch or burn you. Pole does all that and more, plus the bruising. Bruises are commonly referred to as pole kisses in the aerial world. 
Ugh. So why is pole so damn painful? Because, as I've said time and time again, <laughs> you have to take off your clothes to do it, which means you lose any protective barrier. Like I mentioned, if your bare skin comes in contact with the rope or the silks, you're likely to get a burn. So for pretty much every apparatus except for pole, you're going to want to be covered up. That means that your skin has at least one layer, however flimsy, of a protective barrier between it and the apparatus. Yeah, it's not like that with pole. <laughs> it's just your bare skin and the apparatus, and you've got to shove your skin against it again and again until it catches and holds you and eventually becomes desensitized. It is always so unbelievable when instructors claim that they no longer bruise and you're walking out of pole class with like galaxy-sized pole kisses on your thighs, but trust me, that's a real thing. I've barely been back on the pole for half a year and I've already found that it takes a lot to make me bruise. There are certain types of pole that allow you and in fact require you to be clothed. Chinese pole and any silicone pole will rip your skin right off if you try to go for it without clothing on. But the pole we commonly see and think of in Aerial Studios requires you to take it off, baby! That's another element of difficulty we don't often consider. Taking up pole doesn't give you the option to just say, I'm taking up an aerial art because it's cool, and treat it like any other gym trip. You're going to have to confront your mostly naked body every time you get on that pole. You can't flinch away from your flesh in the mirror or your flesh against the apparatus because that's just the way it has to be. If you're having serious body image issues, yes, pole can absolutely help you conquer those, but a lot of folks might not stick with it because it's just so daunting for them to have to confront their body every time. Another mental barrier that comes with pole especially is how darn easy it looks and how darn impossible it feels. Uh, don't get me wrong, really good silks or trapeze artists make that look easy and then you try it and you're like, how do you even get your legs up on this thing? Or like, oh my gosh, I'm up so high, come get me, I'm scared. <laughs> but somehow it seems like there's a more logical progression with other apparatuses like, oh, of course, yeah, I'm not at the level yet where I can wrap myself up 20 times and then plummet face first <laughs> towards the ground. So it doesn't feel like it puts you out much to work towards that. But since pole is so fixed and unmoving, it's sort of like, how hard could this possibly be? And you see an instructor doing it so easily and you're like, yeah, of course I could do that. Other apparatuses require repetitive body motions until your muscles are strong enough that it becomes second nature. But pole is just as much about strength as it is about tolerance, and it's hard to mimic pole training outside of actually being on a pole, and then it's like, okay, I just have to put myself into pain over and over until I can do this move one single time for two seconds without crying. And don't get me started on grip. Holy hell has this been the most frustrating part of my pole journey. Like I said, pole instructors make a move look so easy, and then it's your turn, and oops, I slipped off the pole. Okay, well, I better put on some dry hands. Okay, that worked for a single attempt, and um, yep, okay, slipping off again. I better clean the pole. Okay, everyone else in class is getting it. And I slipped again. Okay, uh, the instructor is telling me, just grab the pole. That's what... I'm doing. Okay, I slipped again. Like I was saying about resting on other apparatuses, if your grip loosens or slips, you can always find your way into a seated position or tie yourself a footlock to rest for a moment and get your grip back. If your grip loosens on the pole, you're going down. And yes, some things like rope are an absolute bitch to grip, but for fabric apparatuses, you can use these really intense aerosolized grip aids that make your hands super sticky like you just dipped them in sap. Pole grip aids are about subtracting sweat, not adding stickiness, because that could ruin the finish of the pole. So for sweaty handers like me, any grip aids you apply are going to get sweated off in a few moments, and then you're back at square one, and did I mention how frustrating this is? And of course, I can't mention the difficulty of pole dancing without mentioning the stigma. If you decide to take up any other aerial art, with the exception of shoving hooks into your back, probably, nobody is going to give you any guff about trying to be sexy or wondering if you're a stripper now. If you take up pole, you're probably going to hear a lot of weird and uncomfortable comments from friends, strangers, family. And to reiterate, there is no shame in being a stripper, and strippers created what we know as pole dancing today in the West, but it hurts that pole is the only aerial art where you have to grow a metaphorical thick skin at the same time as you are literally trying to develop thicker skin. Having to explain yourself over and over can be mentally draining, and nobody's making other aerialists do that. So, in conclusion, is pole dancing the most difficult aerial art? <laughs> pole dancer says yes! <laughs> if I had made this video while still deep in the silks world, would I have said silks is the most difficult? Mm, uh, probably not. <laughs>
<laughs> but obviously I do have some bias towards my sport and it makes me feel tough and badass to be like, yeah, I'm doing the hardest one. What do you think? Do you have experience with other apparatuses? Is pole actually easy and I'm just a big old crybaby? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe and remember that I'm proud of you. Bye!